Okay, in this problem, we're given a level curve, g of x, y equals c, as follow, or as shown, and we're asked to approximate points near which um, the equation cannot implicitly define y as a function of x and x as a function of y. So in order to, in order for our equation to define, implicitly define y as a function of x, we need The partial derivative of g with respect to y to be non-zero, and then for in order to define x as a function of y, we need that the partial derivative of g with respect to x is non-zero. So looking at our level curve, the first thing that we'll note is that we have a critical point at zero, zero. Uh, we know that because, and it, in fact it's a saddle point at zero, zero because the level curves cross. So, so what we know about a critical point is that the gradient vector is equal to zero at that point. So, and our, if our gradient of g is zero, then that means that both of the components of the gradient are zero. So that means right away that we have a point for both um, parts A and B. So for part A, and part B, we know that at zero, zero, Y cannot implicitly be defined as a function of X and x cannot be implicitly defined as a function of y because at both of those points, our partial derivative of g with respect to x and y are zero. So we have this point, we'll mark it there. So now what we know about level curves and the gradient vector is that the gradient vectors are perpendicular to our level curves. So that means that if we were to draw our level or our gradients, we would see that, for instance, at the point negative one zero, we have it either be pointing out um, to the left or pointing in to the right. And again, we would see that at our point one zero. And so now we, we know that um, if our gradient is pointing just in one direction, so in this case, there's no y component to our gradient, that means that our partial derivative of g with respect to y is zero. So that means we can add two more points to part A. So we have so we have these two points in which we have no y component for our gradient. So we know that our partial derivative of g with respect to y is zero. And now it's easy to see again that we have these points here where Our vectors that are perpendicular to our level curve have no x component. So that means that we have 
no x component to our gradient, which means that our partial derivative of g with respect to x is zero. So we actually have four more points um, occurring at those, at those spots where we cannot implicitly define x as a function of y. So we can go ahead and estimate this is our y components are about plus or minus um, 0 0.45. So we have and then our x components look to be about um, plus or minus negative point or plus or minus 0.7. So we have 0 0.7 comma 0 0.45, which is this point. And then we have negative 0 0.7 comma 0 0.45, which is this point. And then we have 0 0.7 comma negative 0 0.45, which is going to be this point. And finally, we have negative 0 0.7 and negative 0 0.45, which is going to be that point. So we have four points um, that have no x component, but have a y component. And then we have one point that has no x or y component. And then we have two points where we have no, where we have no y component, but we have an x component. So we have, for part A, three points, and for part B, five points.